Greetings, welcome to Sessions. This one we're going to be digging into our approach to software or how to prepare files for Origin. So uh, we're going to go through using Affinity as an example. It's an example of a, a vector editing software that is an option. We'll walk you through all the other options and different approaches you might take to uh, creating files for fabricating with Origin. So one of the critical or most valuable approaches to creating shapes with Origin is Ontool CAD. It's the most sort of immediate and convenient way to make shapes. You compose them with Origin. And if ever you have a scenario where you can create a shape and get a job done without requiring a computer, that's obviously a, a huge boon to not have to go you know, into an office or open a laptop or whatever else, your phone, you name it. So that's always the first point of call. And we're always working on the capabilities that Ontool CAD deliver. Beyond that, if you're not a or not feeling especially creative or just want to take a look at projects that other people have created and uploaded, we've got Shaper Hub. So I'll just jump to an example of what's live there at the moment. Here's an example of, you know, all the recent projects people have uploaded to Shaper Hub. These are really powerful in that you can, you know, look for categories. So you might be after joinery examples or uh, you might be after, let's see here. This premium projects are a new one, so we can look for those. They're at the top here. So there's a huge array of different projects available on Shaper Hub that other people just like you have created and uploaded for the community to share. And then there's the premium projects. Here's a free one. They come with a lot more information, a lot more details about how to fabricate this project, a lot of beautiful photos and images of the process of making the project. That would be the second point of call if you're just sort of getting a feel for origin. You know, you, you create a few shapes with uh, regular Ontool CAD, then jump into Shaper Hub and look through some other designs for inspiration and just an idea of how, how to fabricate using origin. Then the next, we'll start to get into the actual design software. Worth remembering, always there is the service Shaper Assist. So if you ever stall out or stumble or struggle with any file you're preparing for Origin, there's a few avenues you can take to resolve the situation. Hopefully it'll be simple for you to resolve on your own. That would be basically call out to the community. We've got a lot of really helpful, really competent people who are willing to you know, lend an ear. So if you can give them a good description of what's going wrong, maybe upload an SVG with an example of where you're stumbling. They'll be really helpful. We have our support channels. So you can send an email in to support at shapertools.com and they will endeavor to help as well. And then if you want some sort of heavy lifting, so maybe you want like a, a resource that's familiar with origin fabrication to prepare a more substantial project for you, like it's a it's sort of drafting prep task, send that through to Shaper Assist. You know, send up a design, it might be a napkin sketch, any kind of idea or a partially prepared 3D or 2D file, send that up to Shaper Assist and they'll give you a quote for what it will cost to actually prepare that and send that back to you as a project, not unlike what we looked at on Shaper Hub just a moment earlier. So that's, that's always your sort of get out of jail card. It's nice to know there's, there's options and you're never going to completely stall out. And then we have the design software. So we'll get into that now. But first, we'll talk about ultimately what we are sending to Origin. So Origin's native file format that, you, that it uses for cutting is called uh, an SVG. That stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And you'll see here we have all the nodes defined on this Scalable Vector Graphic. So this is kind of like drafting. Each one of these points is sort of mathematically related to one another with a curve joining them. And you can see there, there's little handles and things that enable you to edit it versus a raster image. So raster image you would be familiar with if you've ever taken a digital photo with a camera. You'll see here, they look the same when they're small. I hope you can see my little highlight here. So the vector and the raster. So the vector is the SVG. The raster is a, a JPEG, GIF, PNG. It is just a series of dots. So you'll see as you scale them up, the dots become more evident and you'll know that the you'll see that the dots don't know anything about the surrounding dots. So these dots don't know that they make up an S. So if you just zoom into them, you just get more bigger, crunchier, uglier dots. And so that works for photos of you know, reality. But if you're drafting up designs and want to cut them, you want each dot to know what its neighboring dots are doing. If they're a curved edge, a sharp edge, closed, open, and that's where a vector format comes in handy. So if anyone's been using vinyl cutters, laser cutters, embroidery machines, you name it, water jets, they're going to require vector files. Same with uh, CNC's like Origin or, yeah. So how do we get these files to Origin? We can save them out of, uh, we'll get to the apps we save them out of. 
but they are available through Wi-Fi via Shaper Hub and uh, My Origin files, and also via USB. So there's a port on the side of Origin. If you're ever going out outside of Wi-Fi coverage, dump your files on a USB and they'll be really available to cut. Another thing worth noting is most phones these days have the ability to be a hotspot. So even if you are you know, in a shop with spotty Wi-Fi, you can always go out and make your phone a hotspot and get the data you require. We're advantaged by being attached to the internet, but we're not blocked. Like the, the tool, it remains useful, functional, even without an internet connection due to our ability to... Uh, save files with, uh, on the USB. Here's a few examples of projects up on Shaper Hub. Now we're getting into two different camps of software. So there's software that works to create, say, organic shapes. So say you're making a sign or you're just sort of composing curves and shapes that aren't mathematically like related to one another or aligned to one another or kind of drafted up. Then you're gonna to want to use what's called a 2D vector editing package. So we've shown some videos recently of a program called Vector. It's a web browser based 2D vector editing package. And that lets you just like quickly compose shapes. The level of sophistication is not that high, like the features aren't there, but the ease of use is really effortless. So I'd encourage people, obviously it's free. You can jump in and have a look there. It's a good place to start. It doesn't cost you anything to check it out. And maybe it provides the capabilities you require. A more complicated version is Inkscape. It's just been updated to version one. It's an open source package, so it's also free. You do install it on your computer. It's available for Windows, Mac, Linux. And it's a little, it's quite feature rich, but it's quite coarse to use. Like the workflows are not super elegant, but if you come from a sort of a technical background, you'll find that to be really compelling. So that one's free. Once again, worth checking out, see if it suits you. Keep in mind on our webpage, so we'll jump to that. We have all the info for these. So on our webpage, you just click on resources and then jump into support. So you're gonna to want to look at designing for origin down here. This is where a lot of the documents are that describe various elements of the Shaper Tools universe. Yeah, here we have a look at, you know, we've got Illustrator, Affinity Design, Fusion, Coral Draw. So these are all the different software packages that we've drafted up really specific sort of info on. So you'll see here, Affinity Design, it's just got the basics you need to know to make sure that you can export from Affinity Design. Yeah, if you're ever looking at a package and are curious if we've got, you know, tested settings that work, this is a great place to start. We'll get back to that in a bit. Affinity Design, that's what we'll be using today. It's not free, it's a $50 one-time cost, so you'll get updates within that version for $50. Uh, it's a pretty well-featured and very sophisticated package. It's not as featured as the next one here, Adobe Illustrator, but it can become too heavy for an early user of Origin. So if, if you're not finding limits with Affinity, if you're not finding that Affinity is holding you back in some ways, there's a couple of features like, say, DXF import is not available in Affinity, and offsetting lines is a bit, you've got to do some kind of weird workarounds for that. And there's a few things like Shape Builder and stuff, more sophisticated features that we mentioned in some videos. If you're not needing those, Affinity is a great place to start and you're only uh, $50 out. So the difference with Adobe Illustrator is it's kind of an industry standard for a lot of web development, a lot of signage, and it's kind of heavier to learn. There's a lot of subtlety, granularity that you can, you can manipulate it and change it to behave as you like, but that can be overwhelming. And it's $21 a month. Then there's, there's a bunch of like websites where you can find, which we'll go to one now, Noun Project, for example where you can find files. This is just, these are designed to be icons, but the fact that they're black and white SVG files means they're perfect for using with Origin. So if I type in, you know, horse, now project's gonna come back with all these horses. So you just sign in with a, you can have a free account or a pro account, depending on if you're using it commercially or not, and just download this file. So get this icon. And this would be if you're using it commercially, and then they got a basic, license, you have to reference the designer if you use that. That's a great way to get files for uh, cutting with origin if you just want to, you know, do some ornamentation or uh, jazz something up a little. So we'll get back to this. So we'd encourage you to take a look at some of those files. Now, you can convert a raster image, which is, as we described earlier, dots. So you'll see here this one's quite coarse, to a vector image, which is uh, curves that are linked to create closed shapes like this. 
We won't actually get into this in this demo, but just know that there is the opportunity to do that. Illustrator, for example, has it, and there's a website. I'll, I'll put a link in the, actually on the community, I'll add the link for the, uh, the website that you can just upload a raster image, tell it to convert to a vector, and it'll send you back an SVG that you can then manipulate with Origin. There is a potential downside there. They can create a lot of data. Like this one is an example where everything's black and white, and it comes through and would be readily and effortlessly cuttable with Origin. But it can, if you've got sort of gradients and a lot of visual noise, you can create just an absurd amount of paths that are actually not very helpful to cut. It doesn't, it's not a straightforward translation in those cases. But for black and white, you can get some really good stuff out of it. It works and can help get you started with logos and stuff like that. Then we get into, if you're fabricating objects that are like three-dimensional, so say you want to join something together, you want to do some sort of joints, you want to make sure they don't intersect. Maybe you want to work on something parametric where you uh, can scale it up and scale it down and have the, say, the thickness of the ply remain con constant throughout. Uh, you can start to look into some of these other apps. Fusion is one that we recommend. They have a free one for startups and education and users who are not using it commercially, or it's $500 a year for commercial use. We have a plugin for that. We'll show you some examples of actually using software. We might as well show you an example of our plugin with Fusion. So this will be for the people who are not familiar with Origin, our plugin, or Fusion. So all the, all the people who are already familiar, this will be pretty basic, but we'll just show you how simple it is to export something. So I've selected my Origin. I'm going to make a sketch. I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to snap it to the zero, zero point. So I'm looking from the top down now. I can type in dimensions here. I'm in uh, millimeters. You'll see them updating. If I type in, say, 50 millimeters, that gets locked. Hit the tab button. You'll see my, my keystrokes down the bottom being logged there. So 200, it does a weird thing with zeros if you type in the same thing multiple times. So 50 millimeters by 200. And now we have this. So I'm just using the middle mouse button to pan around and then shift and the middle mouse button to orbit around. So I can look at this, and then I just select that whole, they call that a profile, and then hit E to extrude it. So this is how you would make a, you know, any old shape, negative 20, select some corners. One, two, three, I'm holding down shift to rotate and then shift to select the corners, and then I can hit fill it. And we'll fill it that by 10 millimeters. You'll see how it's pretty quick. You can do another sketch with that top selected. This isn't so much an education as just a you know, super quick jump start to show you what is sort of available. So don't really be expecting to follow on too much here, but just see how the, the process works. So negative five. So I've just done a new sketch on that top plane, that top face, and I've created an offset from that edge. And then that lets me do this extrude and this time i'm going to extrude into itself so it's going to cut material away hide my origin now in this state keep in mind this whole shape could have been made with on tool cad on origin with uh, rectangles and rounded corners and offsets if i want to export this ready for cutting with origin i just go tools at the top hit the origin export and just use the default setting i'll even turn off advanced so i just select that edge and it's going to find all the geometry that that can be cut from this top surface. And I go OK and save it wherever I want. Into these slides. Yeah. And that would be a file I could then drop to origin and cut. We'll move on from that. We've got SketchUp, which is cheaper than Fusion. It's, slight, it's come from a more low-end background. It's not as parametric, it's not as sophisticated, but it's a lot more approachable to a lot of people. And there's a really good community, a lot of files and examples out there. So definitely, you know, give that one a look. There's a couple of our community of developed extensions or plugins to send these, this data to Origin and create appropriate cut files ready to use with Origin as well. And then there's, you know, SolidWorks, which people coming from a professional background will be familiar with. Very expensive, but you can also export DXF files and then bring them into a 2D vector editing package like Illustrator and convert it to a, an SVG ready for cutting on Origin. So we won't get into those heavily. We'll just keep moving. I'm now going to move on to Affinity. So this is from, this is Affinity, and it is a package that enables us to create 
2D vectors. Specifically, we'll be interested in creating 2D vector SVG files, and we'll show you a couple of examples of that. This one here is just a quick overview of looking at how we encode cut types. So I'll just show you what that means. If I want to create a shape, I can do a rectangle. And if I go to color here, you'll see it's a, let's see here, double click that. That's a gray fill. Now it's a white fill. And actually we'll just do a, we'll do no fill. And we'll do a gray stroke. So up under color here, we've got fill and stroke. So the stroke is the outline. So you'll see here our color coding is telling us how that will be interpreted on origin and what the cut looks like. So first we're going to do, our example is going to be a gray stroke, which is this here, which is an engrave. And this is what it will behave like on tool. The tool path will be in the very center of, of this vector path I make here. So we will cut on this line. So think engraving, basically. Or if you run a larger cutter, this is an example of a quarter inch cutter going along this line, that'll get you a slot. So we'll just show you what this looks like. If I now double click the, the, the stroke, we can just select any gray. Now we're pretty flexible. So if I choose any gray in this region, it's going to behave the same way. So now I've just defined that shape as a online cut. I'm gonna start walking you through the navigation here, and then we'll do a new file and walk you through from the ground up creating that. So if I go middle click on my mouse, I can navigate up and down. So we're actually looking at a raster image here and I'm making, you'll see here, this says image. So I won't be able to cut this image on origin. So I will have to delete it before I go, but this is just to get us the data uh, in context. So a guide, a guide is not cuttable. So this is a, anything that's blue, either a fill or a stroke or both will be interpreted as a guide. We often use them for adding annotations like details. Say I wanted to say, oh, I need this. I'm using the text button here and I'm just clicking over here and I'm gonna type in, you know, quarter of an inch. If I made that blue, so I'm just double clicking to select it all. And then I choose blue. You will see here. So I've given it a blue stroke. I want a blue fill and I want no stroke. This little dash down here means no stroke. So when it's got the red dash through it, it's not stroked. So that would come in as a, an annotation. So that would be, I'd remind myself, hey, I want to cut to quarter of an inch deep. These never form tool paths. I'm using the middle click to move back up here. The tool path is the dotted line that you can cut with origin. So that's why guides are helpful. Also for laying out geometry. I'm just gonna quickly show you one more thing. With text, origin doesn't like live text. So that's, this text is referencing a font. Convert to curves, sorry. So at the top we go convert to curves and that is no longer editable. It's just a group of separate shapes. So they've gone from being text, which is referring to a font, to just raw geometry, which is what origin requires. So just keep that in mind. We'll get back to another one of the settings that does that automatically for you, so you don't have to think about it. But if you ever find yourself placing text in a file and then going to cut it on origin and wondering where the text has gone or why it's not loading, that is usually the place to look. So uh, we won't get bogged down with that in the meantime, though. Then we do black stroke. I'll do a circle this time. There's plenty of interesting shapes here. Now you'll notice, we'll just, as we're doing it, talk through how it behaves. So I'm clicking and dragging, and you'll see the circle can be any proportion. If I hold down shift and drag, I'm locked into a pure circle, not an ellipse. So this is common across all apps. In fact, most of what we're showing you here, you'll find similarities across many apps. So I'm clicking and dragging, and then if I hold down shift and control, I'm expanding it about the center. So if I release control, I'm doing a proportionally constrained circle, holding control, same proportionally constrained, but yeah, uh, that'll be option on Mac, by the way. I'm on a Windows machine right here. So we'll send you the link here for all the shortcuts and actually the training information for Affinity. So this is a great place to go for a heavy sort of video education on this. So they got really great info on all the different features, all the different capabilities. So we'll just be trying to focus on the stuff that's uniquely origin related. Any pitfalls or issues you might encounter, 
and things worth considering there. So if we want to create a cut that we do on the outside of the line, so you'll see here, I'm cutting on the outside of the line, we can predetermine that by going and making our fill black and our stroke. I hope you can see this little stroke, no stroke. Uh, you can have a, a uh, black stroke if you want. Uh, once again, Origin's pretty flexible with this stuff. If you make something kind of blue, kind of gray, it's going to respond appropriately. It's not super fragile like that. And then that will now cut on the outside of the line. So uh, keep in mind, all of this, you can ignore it. So this is like a feature to help you out and get you cutting and get you known outcomes without having to think about it when you're on tools. So you can predetermine how you want your paths to cut. Keep in mind, we don't get bogged down with cam or any of that. Like you, you can change all this on tools. So I could take my design that's been defined as an outside cut and then on tool just change it to an inside cut, which is pretty flexible, pretty epic. And the same applies to your cutter diameter. So you can change your cutters, change anything as you go. So don't think about this as programming. Just think of this as making shapes. White fill, black stroke, that means cut on the inside. And then gray fill is a pocket. This is all up on the website once again, designing for origin and type, cut type encoding. So I'd encourage you to take a deep dive in here. There's a template for Illustrator and all of the same information we're describing here. So pocket is just kind of paint by numbers type arrangement where it will set up a protective boundary. So there's a little gap inside the area that you've defined and you can cut anywhere within there. So it'll stop you going over the border, but you can cut anywhere in that area. Now we're going to get into an actual, some examples of sort of situations where you would actually make something relevant. Um, so here's an example of what we'll sort of build up for starters. Here's an example of something we intend to engrave. So this might be, you know, your little maker's mark or something that you would cut onto the bottom of a unique set of benches or whatever. So we'll walk you through the process of prepping this for origin. So first up, new file. Now this is already set, so we can choose any preset we want, but origin, the first thing you want to think about is real world units. A lot of these vector apps are sort of, they have their feet in both camps. They need to provide functionality to the web and print and all sorts of different things, but also, you know, architecture and sort of the fabrication industry as well. So they can all do inches or millimeters, real world units, basically. So define the dimensions of the file you want in width and height. And then here's the options you've got, yards, meters, whatever. So, so long as you're not in points or pixels or picas, you're talking about something that's got a real physical dimension. RGB is fine. Leave all this the same as it is and just go create. So now we're in here. What we're looking at here is our colors, layers. We're going to come back to that a lot. And then this is our artboard. We can create shapes in here. In fact, we'll start doing that now. You'll notice as I move around, we can choose different snapping options here. So at the moment, this is in candidate list. So we'll just do all layers. And I'll choose a preset actually, that's object creation, sorry, page layout. So now as we move around, you'll notice it's snapping to the center. These are how these snapping lines show up. So they can be actually super helpful. And, but sometimes it's a little bit ambiguous, right? It can be easy to lose track of what's going on. So basically these presets, that just have a pre-selected bunch of more subtle options. So we're just going to choose whatever's in our, in our current layer. And you can then choose, do you want to snap to the grid if you make a grid or other objects or other layers, whatever. But for this one, we want to be able to snap to our layer. So here's the center. We can either use the, the snaps or we can use their guides. These are really powerful. So we've got a 20 inch page and you'll notice I can drag and drop that. It's snapping to 10 inches, which is the center of that page. So I can start with that and do the same vertically and horizontally. That gives me a good reference point to start working on my uh, ellipses. So we're going to do the same thing we did previously. I'm clicking and dragging, and then I hold down Control. Now that means I'm, I've snapped to the center, and I'm making an, an ellipse of, you know, this is going to be a huge one. So we'll do it about, about that. It's at 6 to 14. That's a pretty big maker's mark right there. Now 
that's black and white. We won't worry about color coding yet. In fact, if you don't want to get bogged down with that while you're just creating geometry, you can go into this mode, which is called outline mode, which hides all of, all of that. So here this object is red, just to make that more obvious. And then if I go to outline mode, I now see just the vectors. Now, it's important to remember that this, I'm holding down control and using the mouse wheel to zoom in, this is actually what origin is interested in, this vector versus this. So I'm gonna hide the fill and then we're gonna give it a stroke and we're gonna choose a large stroke of 0.25. So that's 0.25 inches. We'll make a note here, we'll go to settings, so preferences, and user interface. If you see those lines or text or anything being described in points when your document is in inches, you can unclick these two. See how it says points up there? That'll catch you out initially, but uh, you can set that off and you'll get a design that's now talking about real world units. It's not that helpful to think in points for this sort of stuff. Yeah, here's our stroke. It's quarter of an inch wide. Uh, if I make it gray, this is what's actually going to be cut if I run a quarter inch cutter around this path. Now, it's because I've encoded it as a gray stroke. I do want that, but Origin is only interested in the path itself. So the dimensions of the path is this, and it's going to cut centered on that line, rather than sometimes it can be possible for them to get confused and include the stroke. So just make sure your transforms, which are down here, by the way, and this will actually be a good place to do this. So width, I'll do that seven inches. And you'll notice I'm centered here. I'm gonna use the center point for it to scale around. And height, I'll do four. Now we can use the same as on origin. We can use any anchor point of those nine, or we can do custom align that. But that's always talking about what you have selected, which is using this tool the select tool. So I've just clicked in the middle of the screen. I've deselected it. There's no readout there. Select it. There is a readout. This is going to be your friend, the layers menu. So we're going to quickly go edit, duplicate selection, control J. I'm not going to, you know, harp on about shortcuts. It does make things a lot easier. Don't get bogged down by them. Just if you find yourself doing something over and over again, there are a lot of shortcuts available and chances are that function is available. Now, this now has two of these. So if I click and drag this one, you'll see I've got two and I can turn them off with this visibility thing. So I've got my two layers and we're going to undo that. And now I'm gonna start putting my text on the path. It's gonna grab some text. A lot of this stuff, I'm gonna hide the bottom layer. A lot of this stuff, you'll see it behaves differently as you move around. So if I just type text here, I'll get text. Does that make sense? But if I come down here and type with this selected, I'm holding down control to select it. See how my cursor changes to a little sort of squiggly T. That means I'm going to put this on a path. I'll do that down here. And then I'm going to type in text. So Sam's customs. Um, now this is kind of cool. I'm typing from the left edge. This is the same as most, you know, Word, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to center it and then bring this around. This is my start point. A lot of the stuff, so I can bring this around and do the start and the finish. And you'll notice they actually, I can center them on this bottom point here. Just like so. I've also got the ability to change the positioning of this and the scale of this. So I'll do this one inch. That's way too big. I'll do it uh, 0.5. And then I can do baseline here and just change with that position so I can go up or down. And then just a pointer to avoid surprises. You can, it can be reversed as well if you want it on the top or the bottom. So just keep an eye. That's that little arrow which will flip it. So you've got these green things for the left side, red for the right, and you can quickly align that stuff. One other thing, you know, we've got on tool text with origin. So you could maybe pre-populate this with a bunch of stuff. I've actually downloaded that, that horse. So I'm going to bring that in. So this is the horse we downloaded from Noun Project. So we'll grab this horse and we'll drop this in here. 
So I pasted that in with the text still highlighted. So I'm going to drop the text. This is my select button. Click, paste. Yeah, now we're good. I'll leave a space here to put my text with on tool text with origin, which means I can change that value, swap it out and make adjustments. I'm going to make the horse a gray stroke and no fill. And likewise for my text, so gray stroke. This means I can engrave all of this. So my outline has a gray stroke. This has a gray stroke. My horse has a gray stroke and this has a gray stroke. So we will now take that object layer, transform, flip horizontal. Oops, sorry. First, I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to go control J or edit, duplicate selection. And then I'm going to go layer, transform, flip horizontal. And now things get really interesting with snapping. So I'm just moving this, clicking and dragging with my left mouse button. If I hold down shift, things get pretty cool. I actually need to go to a different mode up here. Page layout, object creation. So this now sets me up to behave like this. So now we'll get, oops, sorry. All layers. There we go. So now it's showing the top and the bottom is constrained. You can hold down shift to do that as well and snap that out here. So now I've got horses on opposing sides, space for that. And we could continue to add you know, more ornamentation, whatever we want, but I'll get rid of this live text. And then I was gonna show you the settings to export this. So export, I've got a preset here and this matches uh, what we have on the website. So I'll type in coding. We go back up one and look at affinity settings. So you just come in here and follow these settings. The one important one is rather than having to turn all of my text into curves one at a time, I can do it on export for this. So just match these tick boxes, do it at 72 DPI and you'll get a good outcome. I'm gonna show more and then this is that exact same thing. And I've got my export text as curves. We're good to go. So export that. Sam Maker's Mark. Save. And then if I go to Shaper Hub, I can go up to my own Shaper Hub. So My Origin Files, Upload Files. And I find my slide here, Sam make this mark. That now is uploading to my origin files and will be ready to cut immediately on my tool if I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah, thanks very much for turning up to that. That's Affinity, but keep in mind these principles apply to pretty much all the standard 2D vector editing packages. So I'd encourage you to kick the tires of any SVG editor you encounter that works nicely. And if you use these same principles, you'll get cut files that work with Origin. If you don't, reach out to us and we'll, we'll take a look and, and try and help out in any way we can.